Let's bring in Lan He Chen, Hoover Institution Research Fellow. So you try to read between the lines on all these things. We've been watching this drama, especially with TikTok. Uh, TikTok. We can leave WeChat to the side for a moment over the last however many weeks. And you know, the, the ban on the downloads is one thing, but you'd still be able to use the app till November 12th under the current rules that have been put out, which, of course, is after the election. And now with the president saying things get worked out quickly, maybe American teenagers can keep their their TikTok. Uh, what do you make of the way this has all been playing out? Well, perhaps, Connell, I, I mean, I think it's a significant uh, challenge. You know, on the national security side, I think the president and his administration are absolutely right to identify both TikTok and WeChat as significant national security uh, threats, potential challenges, uh, particularly if you look at the fact that China passed a national security law uh, recently that actually compels Chinese companies to cooperate with the Chinese government in turning over data, turning over information. So with TikTok, you have the, the problems there. Uh, WeChat, actually, the, the uh, U.S. action is more sweeping even than that. Uh, WeChat will cease to really be able to function in many ways in the U.S. on Sunday when cell carriers are forbidden from essentially allowing WeChat data to travel on those cell services. So the restrictions on mm -hmm. WeChat are even more significant than the ones we see on TikTok. Which is a huge company in China. Uh, doesn't have as yeah. big of an operation here in the United States. But, you know, people who have family in China, that's often how they communicate. And U.S. companies, I believe, will still be, if they operate in China, for now at least, allowed to use WeChat. A lot of them use it to you know, communicate and or collect payments and the like. Uh, it does bring up this larger question you were talking about. This is all about data and the access the Chinese have to U.S. data. Um, and it brings us back to this discussion. I think even you and I have had a number of times about whether we just need two separate you know, ecosystems or internets or yeah. quote unquote decoupling. And that's really what this is. That's where really where we're going here. What do you think? Yeah, Connell, great. I mean, I think it's a great insight. I think that's where we're headed. Uh, in fact, if you talk to folks who, who travel to China with some frequency, you know, I was in China last, uh, toward the end of last year, it, it does feel like it's a totally separate infrastructure when you get there. You have WeChat and you have uh, Alibaba's payment system, all of which happens on your phone. You don't use credit cards that you can use in the U.S. You got to have a different cell phone or at least have a cell phone that can roam on, uh, on Chinese networks. Uh, you know, you don't have access to the same Internet in China. If you want to get access to right. news sources here in the United States, you've got to use a VPN. So we are definitely already looking at a situation where there are separate infrastructures and we are headed for even more separation, given what we're seeing yeah. with the WeChat and TikTok executive order.